Hi, welcome to this video. Um, I'm here with my colleague, Olga, and we're going to tell you a little bit about um, how we coded some provoking games about cybersecurity. So my name is Daisy Abbott and I'm a serious games researcher and I work at the Glasgow School of Art and I love looking at how serious games work and how we can use them to make the world a better place. Olga, do you want to say something? Hello, I am Olga, I'm a serious game designer and developer and I also was a former research associate for the project that we're going to be seeing today. Thanks. So we're going to tell you a little bit about cybersecurity. So what is cybersecurity? Now, in this project, we looked at three main aspects of cybersecurity. And one is about how secure is the actual code that we're using. So code is all over the place, but is it actually secure? Um, the second aspect we're going to look at is the security life cycle, which is more to do with the, the context of software development. So it's to do with humans and communication and resources and workplaces. Uh, and then there's also a third aspect, which is API. Olga's going to tell me what that stands for. That stands for Application Programming Interface, which Fantastic. is the way that coders can reuse code that has been created by a team of developers in order to then produce new new pieces of software. Brilliant. And yeah, so these are kind of the interfaces between different kinds of systems and how different systems talk to each other. So we worked together on this project called the Secreus project. Um, and the Secreus project takes a game-based approach to improving knowledge and attitudes about cybersecurity. And we wanted to use games to help coders and other people who work with coders to think about cybersecurity and even to hopefully change the way that they code so that their, their code is more secure. And now I think we could have a little chat about serious games, Olga. So what, what, how would you define a serious game? So if I'm to quote literature, I would say that a serious game is a game that has a purpose other than just entertainment. But to be honest, I would like to go a little bit more hardcore than that and argue that the majority of games are, game, are methods that uh, we can use to learn and teach both ways. Therefore, I'd say that just the word serious in front means that we are very much aware of this undercover learning process that's taking place anyway. Yeah, and, and they're called lots of different things, aren't they, serious games? But I think that that definition is a very good one. It's, it's where we use games to do something that's not just about playing for enjoyment. And that can be lots and lots of different kinds of things. So I'd like to then introduce the idea of, of provoking games. What are provoking games? So to help people create good games about cybersecurity, we designed some very short games that we hoped would provoke conversations or arguments even um, about cybersecurity concepts. So the games that we designed, they're intended to be played before a game jam. And then at the game jam, the participants are going to reflect on and discuss the concepts that were raised by the game with some experts in cybersecurity. And we hope that this means that they would learn a lot whilst having these conversations. So our hope was that after having played the game and kind of trying to figure out what the game means, the Game Jam participants would be better able to participate in designing their own games. Is that about right, Olga? That sounds just perfect. We were trying to get them into that critical thinking mindset to analyze what they're playing so that they would have their very opinionated sometimes um, approach when they were designing their own games afterwards. Yeah, and, and I think one point to make is that the provoking games, they're not like a, um, an educational game that you might be thinking of because we weren't actually trying to teach people about cybersecurity. We were trying to provoke them into having conversations about cybersecurity uh, and, and hopefully increase their creativity while doing so. Um, so we define this idea of a provoking game as a game that uses the techniques from reflective game design. And Olga talked before about critical reflection. So we were trying to get people to reflect on the game um, and, and to, to kind of use the knowledge and the emotions that came from the game to inform their future work. So we were hoping it would 
help people have a, a, a more a better understanding of their sense of purpose as a as a secure coder or somebody who works in in the software development life cycle. Uh, quite an ambitious, <laughs> quite an ambitious goal, I think. So uh, this is just an overview of the process. We we wanted the games to create different opinions uh, and to start arguments or dialogue, and then by by having this dialogue to really deepen the understanding between cybersecurity experts and coders who are not cybersecurity experts and people who are designing games about cybersecurity. Olga, do you want to talk a bit about our overall design principles? Sure. So this is, let's say, our recipe for the provoking games, making use of literature recommendations for reflective game design or reflective design in general. So the first one would be interpretive flexibility. This gives the player just that space that they need to make their own projection on the material that we have created for them. The second, quite important, I would say, and directly links to what Daisy has been saying, is the disruption or subversion of expectations. And this does hopefully insert a factor of alienation, let's say, from the material that we're we are presenting so that the player can take a, a step back and look at this from another angle and see how they can relate to it. Furthermore, expected failure and or frustration during construction of meaning. Um, this has elements of failing as a teaching and learning method, very important also to our recipe. Our concept um, becomes, let's say, complete with a post-game activity. So therefore we are linking in-game time with out of the game time in order to produce this, this merger of the, of the uh, thinking process. Yeah, so uh, we wanted the games to be open to interpretation and, and to really be quite challenging or even a little bit annoying because we definitely wanted to provoke players into having these discussions. We used a method called triadic game design, uh, and I'll, we'll just talk very briefly about this. So there are three aspects to triadic game design, which are reality, meaning, and play. And reality is where you investigate the problem area and the subject matter, so cybersecurity in this case, um, in order to find out what the problem is, what are you trying to change? And then meaning is when you design how exactly are you going to achieve that change, and then finally, play is where you design the gameplay that will allow you to best achieve the change that you've defined. So the whole project team took part in this process uh, and in helping to, to map out the, the issues in the reality phase. And Olga put together these amazing um, kind of visual whiteboards where we got everybody to put questions on and then we categorized the questions into the main themes of the project that you can see in the video. We then worked really closely with a playwright called Claire Duffy and a cybersecurity expert called Rupert Goodwins from the theatre company Civic Digits. Uh, and we worked with them to create just the ideas for the game, the story for each game, and very carefully map all the, the concepts for the game into cybersecurity concepts and vice versa. So we came up with ideas for three different kinds of three different games. Uh, one was about secure code. One was about the security development, sorry, the software development life cycle, and one was about API security. For each game, we defined what we wanted people to learn about or react to in the game, and then we worked out the metaphors and we worked out the gameplay mechanics to help achieve what we wanted each game to achieve. So here you can see how we used a, a card deck of, of cybersecurity concepts and we kind of mapped our game elements onto these cybersecurity concepts. And this is uh, our interpretation of one of the games and how it all maps, but of course it's not the only interpretation. So this is a um, video gameplay from the first game we created called Protection. This brings the player in the role of a solitary coder who starts first uh, discovering their powers, their strengths, the fact that they can create this entity that's supposed to, in our eyes, represent um, a piece of software. And then they're learning slowly the vulnerabilities of this entity, aka the, the software. The learning of the dangers in this um, digital jungle 
and of the different kind of ways that they can protect themselves, like protect themselves when. Um, they learn this gradually by acquiring defense modules that they can install or uninstall. They have the chance by experimenting but to see which de defense modules work best against which threats, but also which defense modules work best combined together and which are not very much compatible. But then also they have the chance to kind of figure out long-term strategies in order to achieve their goal, which is to arrive at the end of this perilous path when they figure that, let's say, change the level, their operating system gets an upgrade. And by long-term strategies, I mean to, to understand how they can optimize their resources and balance out their security needs to their functionality needs. Thanks. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, and I wanted to just briefly show uh, this this image here. And this is called a gameplay loop. And what it is, it's a kind of visual representation of the overall structure for the game. And the blue boxes show what kinds of behaviors people would use in the game. So, you know, we have one that says explore. This is because we wanted people to have to figure out the game for themselves, you know, use exploratory learning and experimentation. And then the yellow boxes represent the, the actual game mechanics that we're using. And the notes here are uh, how we implemented them in the game itself. So movement to explore the rainforest and then selecting or collecting, which is gathering the upgrades that Olga was talking about. Okay, so I'm gonna play another short clip uh, of gameplay footage from our second game now. And Olga, would you mind just saying a few words about um, developing this other game and, and what Unity is like as a, as a coding platform? Happy to. So the second, the process of developing the second game was quite different compared to the first one. Uh, not only because we as a team had already figured out how to work with each other very well, but the challenges that it presented um, were quite um, new. So as you can see, this is a turn-based puzzle game. It's quite different from the first one, which was more in the style of a platform adventure game. Um, Unity as, is a very friendly platform, very easy to get um, onto. And I think it's perfectly suited for this kind of material that we um, created. It really shined in that area. Most of the work that we have, most of the work behind these games um, will be readily available as a Unity package uh, further on, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, great, thank you. What we did during the actual game jams is we asked the, the people to play these games, that the, the provoking games, before they came to a game jam. And then we asked them during the game jam to try and, and do exactly what we'd done, which is to map the, the metaphors and the, the different aspects of the game to cybersecurity concepts. And this was then used to, to really provoke that dialogue between the experts, the cybersecurity experts, the, the serious games experts, and the game jam participants. Um, and, and hopefully it really contributed towards them developing better games themselves in the game jam. Um, so just to, to bring the video to an end, what, what are we doing now? Well, we're working on our third game, which is about um, API security. And we're also going to look at doing some research to test whether these provoking games actually do what we think they do, um, because we, we don't have any data on that yet, except for our own observations. So we're going to do some research into that. Um, so I'm sure Olga and I would both be really happy if you wanted to play these games. They're, they're free online at the links that were shown in this video. Um, anything final to add, Olga? Oh, yes, please. If you do manage to finish the second game, please mail us your results. <laughs> okay, so that's all from us. Thank you very much, Olga, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you.